don't want to miss it. I don't know if you guys can see. It is about to be. It's about to be. There it is. Boom. December 25th. It's officially Christmas. No better time than to make a video right now. Merry Christmas. You guys that celebrate that. Never this garbage. This is Christmas. Hey guys, my name is Grant Borland, and today I want to take a deep dive on a track I've actually already reviewed on this channel before. A couple weeks ago, I went ahead and I made a short track showcasing some of the sounds from this sample library called Eminence by Ava Audio. If you've watched that video, you've heard the song. Um, if you haven't, I highly suggest going back to that video and uh, quickly watching that. On that video, a subscriber named Jathan Sparks left a comment basically asking if I was willing to provide like a, a tutorial or kind of do like a walkthrough of my process when making this track. And since I kind of only briefly went over this track, I figured maybe it was a good idea to go ahead and maybe do more of a deep dive on it. Because the, the previous video was more about like the sounds of the library, but I didn't really spend much time talking about how I wrote this track or what my process was. So in this video, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do more of a behind the scenes of what my thought process was when creating this track. This is about a 60 second cue, give or take, a pretty short one. You know, it wasn't really meant to be something I was writing for a publisher. It was kind of meant to be a, a demo track, just kind of trying to write something as quick as I could with the, the sample library. So I think if I was writing something for a publisher, um, I might approach this a little bit differently. But that said, I mean, this this kind of has potential. It's, it's in that trailer genre. That's not the word I'm looking for, but that's all I can think of right now. But yeah, let's go ahead. I'll play the track again um, so you can hear hear what it sounds like, and then I'll kind of go ahead and you know, talk more about you know, how I created it. So. Pretty sweet, there's the track for you. Like I said, if you had watched that previous video, you've heard this track before. But let's uh, let's talk about it. So, like I said, this is a 60 second track, and it was kind of made to be just a quick little demo for the, uh, the sample library. That said, even though this wasn't necessarily intended to be pitched for trailers, there were a lot of things I leaned on, and I would do similar when I was writing a trailer track. So, you know, if we look at this track, the first thing I really started out with was kind of like a signature sound. That's a lot of times when I write songs, I like to, you know, find like a hook or some kind of signature sound to start out with. Not every track starts out this way, but a lot of times if I'm doing like heavy sound design kind of things, I feel like a hook or a signature sound is a good spot to start. So my hook or my signature sound um, was this ping that was from the sample library. Pretty simple, but I really like things like that. But I kind of wanted to beef it up. So alongside of that signature sound or that ping, I wanted to add a hit. I wanted it, I wanted it to come in strong um, and kind of beef up this signature sound. So together, layered, it sounds like this. And from there, I was kind of inspired. From there, it's all downhill. So, you know, I started layering in drones. I kind of wanted to set an atmosphere underneath the track. So I've kind of got this drone that lays underneath everything. So I kind of just chopped it up and then kind of had it repeating itself, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, it almost gave it a little bit of movement it's not so stagnant where you just hit a note and then it just kind of hums or drones, you know, I had it 
where the volume kind of tapered off and then it came back in again. So it's kind of doing this almost like a wave kind of thing underneath everything. Um, and I thought that was pretty effective too. So yeah, so we got our signature sounds, our hit, and then we got this drone going on. So from there, I'll be honest, I don't really remember where I went from there. I think what I would like to do and what I've done in this track is layer in like some sub booms. I kind of like adding those in trailer music for like good sync points, um, especially like in intros of songs. Really deep stuff. So you kind of have this with the drone and all the other things. It sounds like this. So you can hear those hits in that signature sound. They kind of just repeat every, you know, every so often. And then I've layered in other other things too. So I think were these booms as well? Yeah, so I didn't use the same sub booms. I changed it up, which I thought kind of added a little bit more sonic interest. Just a little nuances like that, you know, not keeping everything sounding exactly the same, maybe adding a little variety if it sounds good to your ears. But here's the difference in the two sub uh, samples. So super different. The first one's very like, there's like a whoosh on it and it sounds very, to my ears it sounds like it's underwater. I don't know, something about it sounds very underwater to me. Whereas the second sub boom is a lot punchier and it kind of cuts through things too. So I kind of liked having that contrast in that area too. Um, I think we've got a, it says whoosh. So just the whoosh I, I had that led up to the, the next hit. That's the, that's the thing, if you look at this whole timeline, you kind of see that it, we kind of start over here with this, you know, layered, you know, three different sounds, and then as it, you know, progresses, I'm just adding more elements. And I think that's the thing that's important with a lot of trailer music too, is you're gonna kind of keep things evolving. I keep a lot of the elements the same, but just add things on top of it. Um, I almost think about it like a, like a looping pedal. Like I'm a guitarist primarily, so like I would buy, along with my guitar pedals, I always had like a, uh, a looper to, to you know loop my guitar riffs and you know build tracks that way. And I think that kind of mentality worked its way into like my production uh, music. And so that's kind of what I think of. I'm just layering other things and building things up. So it's, it's important to kind of knowing to build things up and to also kind of cut it back too. But in this track, you know, I thought it was interesting to, to add more whooshes because that just sounded, sounded interesting. It's almost like a little shimmer to it. Which really filled out that like kind of mid to high range frequency. Move on to some of the other sounds we got. So that's another ping, um, a ping and then a brahm underneath it. Uh, this brahm is very reserved. You know, some of those brahms you hear in like the big back end of trailers are very just like very loud, obnoxious in your face and they're layered with brass a lot of times. I kind of like these more reserved brahms. I think they're good like in intros to trailers. It almost sounds brooding and it's almost teasing it like something's like, something's about to evolve, something's not quite right. A cool way to get this sound too is if you have a brahm that's really crazy, maybe just add a filter to it and kind of cut some of those harsh high frequencies out. You can do this with an EQ or I know Logic has like a filter plugin where you just like roll back a cutoff knob, but basically you get more of that low mid information and it kind of makes it sound more subtle, which is cool, cool for um, like intros to trailers and stuff. So, and then I also have this pulse. So that's just to give it a little bit of movement. Really simple pulse, doing a basic rhythm, nothing nothing too crazy. But I feel like that adds movement and kind of adds pacing and suspense to a track too. Another good thing to do is add like ticking elements. So I've also added these like clock tick kind of things.
I've also beefed up these ticks with drum hits. I don't, in the mix itself, in the full mix, I don't think it's like super noticeable. It's meant to be more of a subtle thing. You know, I just kind of went wild with the layering on this, so. It almost makes the tick sound a little bit more punchy. To be honest, that was totally like a, an experimental choice. I don't always do that, but I thought it kind of sounded cool in this track, so you know, I took a chance on it. Let's talk about risers. You know, right, right at the end of this, I have risers that build um, as everything's speeding up. You know, the clock's ticking faster, the pulse is going, everything's building. You want to add risers at the end to really sell um, this build. And so those sound like this. Those are cool too, because they kind of have like whooshes on them. They're kind of baked into the sample. I kind of covered some of this stuff in the Eminence video I made, but the sound design in that library is fantastic. So just kind of want to highlight that again. From there, it's just, it's just a lot of layering. I had this interesting drone sound that I kind of thought added a unique sonic signature to the, the piece. So that's basically just a bend, you know, it's called E flat to D, so it kind of just, you know, bends down, you know, a note or whatever. And I thought that sounded really cool, so I kind of had that playing ever, ever so often. I didn't want to overdo it, but you know, it was kind of a cool thing to layer in with the drones, kind of gave it a unique character to it. Added a downer. Another thing that was really cool in this library were these, these drum rolls. If we look at the session, man, like I really did very little processing on this. Like I kind of just used most of the sounds the way they sound out of the box. You know, I've got some reverb on some channels, decapitator, you know, some different sample delays, which is probably the Haas effect. Yeah, that's on my tick. So like a lot of times on my ticking elements, I use the Haas effect, um, which makes things sound a little bit wider. Um, I've made a, a video on that too. It's like. I figured out a way to get wider mixes, or it's, it's called something like that, but I kind of explained the Haas effect and um, how useful that, that is um, for making things. So like, for example, with my ticks, really quick, what it sounds like with Haas effect applied. And with it off. So basically, when the Haas effect is applied, it just sounds a lot wider. Yeah, quick little tip for you, it's pretty pretty interesting. If you wanna know more about that, you should definitely check out that video. I'll make sure to link that as well. But yeah, that's kind of the track. I'm trying to think what else I could show you. There's all these different textures, um, layered in more hits and stuff, so that kind of sounds like this. So I thought that was kind of unique. I mean, these these little jarring um, sound design textures were good to layer with some of the hits. Aside from that, these last few hits, I've just layered a ton of ton of hits, you know, kind of got this well-rounded uh, hit sound, which sounds like this. I had that, that ping in there too, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of the, the gist of the track. Those are kind of the specific elements um, I used, and that's kind of my thought process behind creating this track. So yeah, like I said, I mean, if I were writing a track like this for a publisher, I would probably structure it a little bit differently. Um, I might follow more of a traditional three act structure, but then again, I don't know. I mean, it depends what the publisher wants. I mean, there's tracks out there that get licensed all the time that don't necessarily follow like, a traditional three act structure. Like for example, like a lot of slow burn tracks, that's kind of more of just a huge build as opposed to having these defined sections, which is cool. I think that's 
This is nice that there's a variety of, of different stuff out there. And actually, if I think about it, like I've written tracks, like 60 second spots, that don't really have definitive sections or acts. In fact, when I think about it, I wrote trailer music earlier this year that landed in a trailer for the movie Voyagers, and that was an album that was just 60 second intros, and I didn't have any breaks in those. It was just kind of, you know, just a build, kind of like this. I mean, I think tonally, this sounds completely different than the music that was licensed in Voyagers, but it's still that same kind of idea. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, kind of just matters what the publisher's looking for. Um, and then, you know, obviously the editors and the music supervisors, but. So anyways, that's, that's the track. I hope that was useful. I hope I explained my process well, or at least, you know, you learn something from it. You know, every track's a little bit different, and I thought it was kind of, kind of a fun opportunity to kind of dive into my process on, you know, a demo track that I really didn't have any intentions of purposely trying to license. Um, even though it's a cool track, I don't know, it's just, just different. So when I saw the comment, uh, Jathan, thank you for, you know, for leaving that comment. I, I was intrigued and I wanted to go ahead and take a crack at, you know, showing my process for this kind of thing. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.